Crossroads Media. What is going on, everybody? Welcome on into Sports Talk with Broads. A split in a doubleheader with the Braves. You can't be angry about it. It hurts way more knowing that Bryce Harper in the ninth ties it up. Two-run bomb, 8-8, to before your bullpen gave it up again. Now there's a man on second base, but Jose Alvarado let the Braves take it right back from you, and you need someone to shut it down. Let's not forget that Trey Turner, when you're down 8-4, to hit another home run to make it 8-6 to to even keep you in striking distance. So let's not just step over the fact and gloss over Trey Turner's massive, 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 massive production offensively lately. It's crazy. Now, what else is crazy was his throw to home plate during the debacle in the first inning of the first game. And I have no idea what Jay Cave was doing. I have no idea what happened out in the outfield. That's what this team does, though. And we haven't spoke Phils because of the Eagles returning since I think it was last Friday. After Rob Thompson pulled Christopher Sanchez, they won Saturday, and then they lost the series to Miami. Ranger Suarez throws a gem, and then, of course, here comes Sir Anthony Dominguez, and it wasn't sharp there. Schwarber and Turner, obviously those two guys hit home runs in that game, and you're dealing now with Nick Castellanos batting at the back end of your batting order. It's just annoying, though, that you lose to a team that you should beat in The Miami Marlins, that's what holds me back from being happier about this sequence here. It's not a bad day at the office at all, knowing that you showed the balls and the toughness to fight back against this team. They're so lethal. Matt Olsen just casually smacks around his 49th and his 50th damn home run of the season. That guy's a monster. They replaced Freddie Freeman, and I don't agree with how they handled the Freddie Freeman situation, but they replaced him with Matt Olsen, who just cranked his 50th. I love Kevin Swerber to death. And he's going to hit over 200, baby. So for all you fools that thought that he wasn't good enough, take that 200 and shove it. All right? 200, baby. I don't know where he ended by the end of this day. I just know that once it popped over that 200 mark, I'm throwing a party. All right? Let's see. At the end of the series, according to ESPN, this is after his at bats in game two here of the doubleheader. He's hitting 201 still. Hitting 201. Had three strikeouts swinging in a row, though. Fourth, sixth, and eighth. But hey, he's the best. He's the best. All right. So, yes, it loses some value when you lose the series prior. Uh, But it was a decent day at the office for some, not Taiwan Walker. He threw over 100 pitches to go five and a third, 103 pitches. And when he falls apart, he hits a wall bigger than I've ever seen in my life. Sometimes command is lost and you could tell that the pitcher starts to nibble around the corners, but it's still relatively close to the strike zone. It's just a ball, okay? It's just a couple inches outside. This guy, he's nine feet off the plate. He's drilling you. I had to tweet this out during the game. Yo, Taiwan, you do understand that the agenda here is to miss the barrel, right? is to get it by the hitter. You're not supposed to hit him. I thought that's what he was trying to do. It was happening so frequently. I just had to make sure that he properly digested the rules, okay? I wanted to make sure he was reading the rule book. Holy hell. You know, I was talking to somebody, and I was going back and forth in some text messages, and someone goes, I don't know if this guy makes it through all of his contract. Yeah, I don't blame you for having those thoughts already. He's a mess. Mets fans did try to warn us, and we poo-pooed it. That first half, though, maybe there's less stress because of, in theory, Wheeler and Nola and Ranger. This is us talking us into, no, let's not believe the Mets fans. They're Mets fans. Well, the Mets fans know disgust. And the Mets fans know heartbreak and underperforming. Maybe we should have listened. 
Because Taiwan Walker is egregious, dude. I don't understand. We get robbed of another fantastic Bryce Harper moment. I've never seen someone so clutch in my damn life. He's a 12 out of 10 on any given day, on any given at-bat or in any at-bat, right? Inning one, inning four, inning seven. When it's the ninth, he becomes an 18 out of 10. He jumps massively. The strike zone somehow expands for him, and bang, bang, bang. I guess I should say the ball, the ball when it's coming in. It looks like a beach ball. That's probably a better way to describe it. Yeah, it looks like a damn beach ball. And he rakes. And how many times are we going to see it and believe it and think he put the team on his back again before we realize, oh, well, here's a big arm that we thought would be clutch and would be key. And instead, yeah, they're a key, all right. A key to the other team coming back and spanking you. It would have been so lovely. Think how close they were of taking two today. Imagine, imagine if that's what we got to discuss. I'm so disappointed it was right there. It does show heart and it does show hard work. And they do seem to compete with the Braves. There is some sort of back and forth that these two teams have. And I don't see fear. Sometimes you can definitely see when a team is overmatched and they know it and it leaks into the mental. Then it leaks into the physical. And you see an underperforming team go out there on the diamond. Well, that's not the case here. They fight, they scratch, they throw their punches and they connect a decent amount of time. So that game in game one, it left a sour taste in our mouth for the nightcap. Now Lorenzen got a lead to work with because after that top of the first, the next time he took the mound, you scored four runs. And Mundo Sosa, lovely, love it. I know a lot of people are saying that maybe the Jay Cave is the next uh, Joshua, I want to say Joshua Harris. Josh Harrison, My nine-hole hitter, while he sucked in the beginning of game one, they weren't losing these games because of your nine-hole hitter. There's a lot more to it. The nine-hole hitter. All right, so if it's not him, it's somebody else who's a blah guy. Just the guy. They play sometimes. I don't think it's hit the point that I'm... God, I'm screaming. This is what it is. When you played the Miami Marlins, why'd you lose? The lack of hits when there were runners in scoring position. You knew that would pop up again, no? Way too often. There it was again. It doesn't fall on the shoulders of the last guy or the eighth hole hitter. That's not what's happening here. There's deeper issues. He just becomes the punching bag of it. So I don't get that personally. uh, But Marsh hits a huge home run. Guy's outstanding. His season is ridiculous. He's become such a baller. Big moments too. He's another guy. Lefty, lefty. Doesn't even matter. And apparently it did, right? We were told it did for sure. It's Pache. It's this guy. It's that guy. We'll try everybody. Hey, we'll get a right-handed bat. Trust me. We'll find a way to get him into the lineup. No need. Give him every at-bat against a lefty until he starts to suck against lefties. Brandon Marsh is a killer right now. I want him to see a ton of at-bats. I want him to be in the batter's box. That's not fool around. Sure, you want to get Rojas in there more, and you want to think of a good defensive outfield. I'm not unaware of that. I believe, though, that sometimes 
it gets too much hate. They will need to see at-bats. They will grab time as they march their way into October. You know what else that sucks about this too? Is the wild card race. The wild card race. What this is all about. That number one position to host the postseason game. 8-8. Eight, eight. The score was 8-8. Eight to eight. Please, can we ever get a shutdown inning? Never. So you can't get timely hits, and then you can't get timely shutdown innings. Even the game they won, Gregory Soto has to give up a homer. Everybody has to give up home runs. It's like they're watching Aaron Nola tape before they go to bed, and then it gets drilled into their noggin. Well, this is what I have to do. This is what I have to do. This is what I have to do. And the ball's flying to left field. It's over the wall. It's just what they see every time they watch Aaron Nola. So, the mechanics take over and they follow Aaron Nola's footsteps. I don't know. But yeah, the bullpen is just as ugly as the starting rotation. I thought they'd get out of their funk at some point and they haven't really yet. I still have more faith than most that people will be there. I don't know who. It's a Hoffman. Maybe it's a Strom out of nowhere. Becomes consistent for a month. It's not impossible. It's not highly either. I don't know if it's Jose. I don't know if it's Sir Anthony. Quite frankly, I would be a betting man that it's not Sir Anthony. I still have faith that somebody grabs the ball and go. Craig Kimbrell being the most notable, but he's that closer spot. If someone starts and lands six innings pitched, who has the seventh and eighth before you even get to Kimbrell? Starters? Still a huge, I don't know, Walker, I don't know, Lorenzen, I don't know. It wasn't particularly stellar. I've just seen worse. The bar is super low right now in the Philly starting pitching department. This bullpen shaky. Then the offense is soaring on a night-to-night basis. They're now losing games when they score eight runs. This is what it is. They put up another big spot of seven runs on the Braves in game two. So they're popping numbers. They can't hold it together and keep the other team away from scoring and crossing home plate. Especially against a team like Atlanta, you can't be playing games. The game started off on the wrong foot. The Braves take advantage of that. Now, I know I said Jake Cave wasn't the reason why you lose games. He's a he's a back end of your batting order guy. As long as he doesn't cost you games by stupidity, we're blaming the wrong people. With that said, you go to a game in extra innings, think about whatever that first inning was. Now, keep in mind, Trey Turner's throw to home plate should also be looked at because that was so uncompetitive, non-competitive. Couldn't believe it. Thought the Little League World Series was going on still. Holy hell. That, it did hurt you with Jay Cave. But more times than not, it's not the biggest issue. Maybe it's Covey. All right, maybe it's Covey. A couple podcasts ago, I ripped Amadeo. And if you guys have listened for a while, you, you do know Amadeo on the Anytime Hotline and all. Well, I'll give him credit here. In the Twitch stream, and that's right, twitch.tv slash Broads Media Gaming. We do go live basically every single weekday around 10 a.m. If you want to play Call of Duty, NHL, MLB, the show, you name it. We've been kicking it over there in the mornings. He brought up Covey and said he feels more confident in Covey than Sir Anthony Dominguez. And I said, stop it. Stop it right now. We're not doing this. You're not even in a position to tie the game up with Bryce Harper if Dylan Covey doesn't rock two innings. He got six outs, baby, not just three. Maybe it's Covey. If we're throwing shit into a lake and see what happens, is that even a saying? I have no idea. But if we're going to throw shit in the lake and see what happens, I feel I'm combining two. Uh, if, if that's what you do, and Covey's it, Strom, Hoffman, and Kimbrell, and we're seeing that, that compete in the NLCS. 
in game three, in game four. Whatever. I guess it's possible. Oh, man. I'm an idiot. And you're an idiot if you're not using my bookie. They are the presenting sponsor here on Sports Talk with Broads. And I've been cashing out pretty much daily, okay? I've been bringing in the Benjamins. The wife's happy. I'm happy. It's always great when she's happy. But I have to thank my bookie. Now, as a better, you demand perfection. And my bookie delivers NFL, college football, and a brand new cash out system that gives you options to bet and win all season long. First two legs of your parlay hit, you can cash out early and place another bet. Or let it ride for the chance at a bigger payday. So join the my bookie family for an entire season filled with daily odds boost, same game parlays, and super contest. This season, my bookie has a no strings attached cash bonus that lets you deposit and withdraw quick. Use promo code BRODES on a deposit of $50 or more and you can receive up to $200 in cash instantly to your my bookie account. So bet your deposit amount once and you're ready to withdraw at any time. Again, that's promo code BRODES to claim your cash deposit bonus. You could bet anything Anytime, anywhere, only with my bookie. Let's run to the anytime hotline. Let's get the feet moving. All right, let's do it. Let's take our calls. Let it rock. Okay, you split the double header. I can live with that. But I'm sitting here, bros, thinking to myself, I need more from the bullpen. I need so much more from the bullpen than we've been getting lately. It, our bullpen seems to be allergic to scoreless innings yes and that is not acceptable at this juncture especially when the season's coming to an end here and you know our starters are good but not perfect speaking of starters taiwan walker man oh geez i'm the fact that we're stuck with him for another three years after this is starting to scare the living daylights out of me (sighs) but uh we really need to win this series desperately, especially after losing to Miami. That was unacceptable, and this is the only way we can really come back from that. And I need more from the bullpen. I need more from Dominguez. I need more from Strom and so forth. Yeah. I generally agree with winning every series you're playing in. And I'm harsh on this team. You know that. Not really. I don't think I'm harsh. I hold them accountable. But I tend to be on the side of, you better go win two of three. You better go win three of four. Go sweep. Sweep. It's time to take all three. I definitely hold them accountable. This is a series I could understand two and two. I don't like it. I don't love it being reasonable with who this team is, where they currently stand, with two parts of their team collapsing, starters and bullpen. And and you say that the starters are good. I don't know if they are. I really don't. I don't know if they are. Zach Wheeler is. It's not even funny. There's one guy in the starting rotation. So I don't know if they have a good rotation. Sure, Ranger can be. He could throw a no-no in the five, in the six. He could also get beat up. Three and a third. Walking guys. And guess what? That's been the norm. That's been more consistent than the good Ranger Suarez. So I, I do disagree on that front, but your overall message is fair. This bullpen isn't doing well enough. I'm I'm with you. They're not doing well enough at all. I was just hoping someone would turn the corner. Craig seemed to. He's won for sure because he did dip. And I actually have trust in him. Him and Hoffman. That's basically where I ride right now if I'm Rob picking up the phone. I'm very happy with the split today. Mike Lorenzen was good. The bullpen was very good for the most part. The bats were flying. Yeah, I don't know how I feel about the pen overall. Game two, they had enough runs to hold on. There were some runs, though. The Braves never went away. Is that fair? They're always in the distance. They're always lurking. You never feel solid. Oh, this one's done. This is wrapped up. Uh Uh-uh. 
One swing of the bat, two swings of the bat. Now it's a one-run game again. They're always sniffing your ass. Always. A split today is exactly what the doctor ordered. <laughs> and I'm very excited for the rest of the series with these Braves. Hopefully they can take both, but a split would be pretty nice. I believe in them. I believe in the bats. And Bryce Harper, you are something special, man. You are special. <laughs> he is special. We basically just spent the last 20 minutes not talking about Bryce Harper and what he did. I brought it up for two or three minutes. The reason why that's important, we should lead off with it. We should have it to break down in the nine other times he did it. It should be top of the line stuff. Top of the order. He's putting the city on his back and he's raking and he's doing his thing. When they end up resulting in a loss, now everything changes. Now it becomes middle of the middle of the pile. All right, well, what happened with Sir Anthony? What happens with Strom? What happens with X, Y, and Z? Oh, yeah, it would have been cool if we could stare more at the highlights and see Bryce again. It would be nice to watch the slow-mo and make it count. How many times do you go back and see something that crazy when you lose? You don't put it on replay. Now, the playoffs, when you win a game, when you beat Atlanta, when you beat San Diego, of course, if you lose that game, you think I'm having the same feelings right now? No. So as a fan base, he's rewarding us. And it's not lasting as long as it needs to last. It lasts an hour because by the time the game's over, well, that's not, that's not fair because he's keep happening in the ninth. He's keep happening in the ninth inning. So within 15 minutes, the shelf life, done. No, we deserve to soak it in. We deserve at least 24 hours. Can we get 24 hours? Can we get 24 minutes? It's one of a kind. This team and what they do to us. All right, a couple of these are from after game one. Why not sprinkle a few in? <sighs> Yo, bro, I I know you just saw what just happened with this game. Bryce just tied it up, and we go out there and lose. My main concern is not the hitting, it's the pitching. The bullpen is awful. I think the only reliable starter... I the only reliable pitcher in this team is Zach Wheeler. I mean, there's not one person in the bullpen that I'm thinking, yeah, I want to go to this guy. It's not Alvarado. It's not Dominguez. It's not Kimbrell. It's nobody. It's Kimbrell. For me, personally, it's Kimbrell, and it's Hoffman. There's not one guy in the bullpen that I think is reliable enough to go shut down a playoff game. Kimbrell. To say Kimbrell can't do it is not fair to him. Kimbrell's had a good season. Not elite, 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 but he's had a good season. Everyone else started to blow the same time he did, which then put a lot of emphasis on him because of how many saves he had in the first half and how he blew zero saves, zero saves in the first half. When he has the ball, I don't think it's an automatic L. I give them a higher percent chance of closing and winning the game more than I think they lose. Every time it's a ninth inning and he has the ball. Advantage Phillies. And that's how you have to approach the ninth inning. Do you have the advantage in the ninth with the lead? You do. With with 2023 Philadelphia Phillies, Craig Kimbrell, I think you do. And I mean, if they keep it up and the hitting slows with Castellanos and all these other guys, it's not going to be, are they going to get home field advantage? It's going to be, are they going to make the playoffs at all? I'm not going to the, are they making the playoffs? They're making the playoffs. I'm not letting that even drip into my mind. They are making the playoffs. It's going to be rocky because all they know is rocky. It sucks, but they're making the playoffs. Would I trust Hoffman? Playoff game, eighth inning, seventh inning. 
Why not? Yes. Yes. Why not? Hunter, I am trying to prevent myself from screaming. This is only after game one. I don't even know what game two has prepared for us. How many times this year, how many, is Bryce Harper going to hit a gigantic home run for this team just to screw it away? Or just to screw it away? First batter at the top of the 10th inning rule, allow a single. And that only proves that the ghost runner is the dumbest rule to ever be invented in any sport. Holy shit. And then you allow a second run just on top of it. And basically, that's the game. How is Bryce Harper not even pissed about this? How many times has this guy been so clutch for us this year, only for it to be shitted away? I'm surprised he's not punching every guy in that goddamn bullpen. Besides Jeff Hoffman and Dylan Colby, apparently, because they're the only two reliable pitchers in the bullpen. All right, there's Amadai. He had to take a jab, huh? He had to take a jab. How funny is that? How funny is that he brought that up? I knew he had to have, right? Of course, he was going to bring up Kobe. I, I gave you your praise, all right? How, how about that? That's funny. Um, all right. Back at it again tomorrow. Let's see what they do. It'll be fun, I'm sure. Thank you all so much. We'll be talking very soon.